as uh, we are looking for an evolution of a human being through the education system, the education system should be always an evolving process by itself. When we think in terms of a perfect school, we are thinking of again fixing it somewhere. That's what needs to change. As one can develop muscle by doing certain things with the body, one can develop intelligence. The fundamental aspect of developing intelligence is right now, there are some studies, I know, I don't know, you must tell me, I'm not an expert on these things, which say if a child goes through twenty years of formal education and comes out with a PhD, they say seventy percent of intelligence is irrevocably destroyed. Because Sorry, we are… I, I have a PhD, I don't know what you're suggesting <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to you, Ken. <laughs> so, uh, essentially what's being said by the studies is uh, we are mistaking information for education. By deadening the brain with too much information, definitely the possibility of intelligence is lost. This is why I said what we accumulate and who we are should remain separate. Who I am should not be influenced by what I have accumulated, whether they're material things or information or impressions, this is of the world. I would like to little differ in what was said in terms of child's inner world and external world. What we are mistaking to be inner world is still external in my perception because a child's fears, ambitions, aspirations are all external, inspired or infected, I would say, by the outside situation. It is not natural aspiration of life. Natural aspiration of life, if you look at it, if you leave someone uninfluenced from outside, the natural aspiration is always to expand, not to become less. But if you look at today's form of education, because it's purely intellect-based education. There's no other dimension of intelligence in it. And I think in this part of the world there is a serious mistake that intellect has been mistaken for intelligence. Intellect… your intellect can function only with the backing of your memory. Or in other words, your intellect functions with accumulated information. If I take away all your memory, your intellect is quite useless by itself. But there are other dimensions of intelligence within you, which does not need the support of memory. If education systems do not focus on activating these dimensions of intelligence, you will find factory workers, you will not find a genius in every home. What you need is an innovative intelligence. Today when I say… when I use the word innovation, you think developing a new I-8 phone. I'm not talking about that. Maybe we can develop a world without a phone <laughs> We don't know what's an innovation. Innovation need not necessarily mean improvement of what we have little by little, little by little. Yes, that is also needed, but that is not what life is looking for. People are not any better with phone, without phone, maybe we're doing more things, but equally confused, equally struggling as it was before. So the point is not about what we have gathered. What we have gathered is useful in creating comfort and convenience for the world. What we have gathered is not useful for creating well-being for ourselves and for the world. If well-being has to happen, we have to access dimensions of intelligence which are not intellectual because intellect cannot function without accumulated information. If you function always out of accumulated information, you naturally get identified with it. So depending upon what you have accumulated, you become that kind. Because you have become that kind, another kind and your kind always goes into conflict. If the purpose of education is to expand horizons of individual human beings, you can see that's definitely not happening. The more educated somebody becomes, as people get educated, they really can't get along with anybody. 
the not so educated people can live together, hundred people can live together. Once you become educated, you become isolated because this is the nature of the intellect. Because you're employing only one wheel out of four wheels of your car, it is like that. It's like suppose you're driving on the street and you are some kind of an expert, you drive on just two wheels. Maybe you're good at it, but nobody else on the street want to drive with you, they will all stop. If you're driving on four wheels, everybody will drive with you. So the other dimensions of intelligence have to come, otherwise the moment you get intellectual unknowingly, you in some way you exclude the world. So in a way, the way of our education has been to butcher the existence into tiny fragments and we're trying to fix the fragments, it's not going to work like that. If education has to become holistic, there are systemic problems, I'm not saying no, but more than the systems, the people who deliver the system, if we can upgrade them in a huge way, every system can be made to work good. See, if we are interested in the future generations of our humanity, the best people in the world must go into teaching. But right now, everything is determined by economics. How much are you paid? That's how you go. So this is where what I am saying earlier is important. What you accumulate should, should not determine who you are. As long as that is so, the economic values will rule. As long economic values rule, it's the muscle which rules, not the intelligence.